Let's begin with literature today. We're going to be doing our author study. So you need this chart. This is called a key individual chart. And you will need these two pages of all the information about our author. And you won't need this one, but this is going to go with these in your binder, in your notebook. So let's first talk about what we put on a key individual chart. So let's go over to the board and look at the first column. First column is history. I don't want you to write these things down. This is the types of things that go in this column. So we're going to look at this. And then we're going to read our information page and look for the right information to put in this column. So in this column about history, we put when and where the person was born, where they, where they grew up or lived as an adult, and what was going on in the world when they were alive. Because that will influence what they've written. So let's look at our first section where it says history, right there. Doris Gates was born on November 26th, 1901, that's more than 100 years ago, in Mountain View, California, the oldest daughter of Charles Obed and Jessie Louise Gates. Her maiden name was Joan. So there's some things we should write down already. So let's highlight what you're going to write down. And then you can write them down after the video is over. So let's highlight born November 26, 1901. And highlight Mountain View, California. And we don't need to write down her parents' names. Just fun to know that. Next little two-line thing. She lived and worked in California's Central Valley during the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. We're going to learn more about what that was next week. But you can highlight pretty much the whole, that whole sentence. Yeah, we highlight the whole sentence. And then if you'd like to put when she died, you can highlight died at age of 85 in 1987. You don't have to put the exact date. So the second thing we highlighted, she lived and worked in the Central Valley. That tells us what was going on in the world when she was writing. So those are the things you're going to write in the history section. Okay, so the next section is influences. When you influence somebody, you, you affect them either for good or for bad. And the direction of their life can change because of it. So ma major influences in most people's lives, of course, of course, first their parents, where they went to college, maybe some teachers or mentors, pastors, bosses. People can affect your life, people, your friends. So let's read in the biblical influences section on your paper. And let's highlight the things we're going to put in this section. Don't write these things. We're going to highlight here, and then later on after the video, you're going to write the things we highlight in the Biblical Influences column. Please make sure you follow those directions, because otherwise you're going to be calling me, asking me for a new copy of this. So just get, make sure you pay attention and get it right. Sorry, I dropped my papers. So in that first column, history, you're going to write those things we just highlighted in the history section of this paper. Got it? All right. In the Biblical Influences section, it talks about her parents. So let's highlight father. So it says, Miss Gates's father was a small town doctor. Her mother had a BA from Milton College in classical studies. So let's highlight father, doctor, mother, and college. 
father, doctor, mother, and college. I don't know if you know, but this is over 100 years ago. Not as many ladies went to college as they do now. So the fact that her mom went to college, and her dad obviously went to college, he was a doctor, that influenced her. So her parents were educated. You might even write that down after the, the word classical studies, right here. But both parents college educated. So you can write that on your chart under influences. So you want to write both. This is on your paper, not on your chart yet. Both parents college educated. Write that on your notes. Both parents, college educated. Pause the video if you need time to write. Okay, let's go on reading, looking for influences. When she was seven, they moved to her father's parents' prune ranch outside San Jose. Mountain View, by the way, where she was born is near San Jose also. It was there at the age of eight that Doris began school. So she went to school. So you could put Doris went to school or Doris and school. You can highlight those things. And then on your chart, turn it into a sentence that makes sense or a phrase. It doesn't have to be a complete sentence. So Doris began school. Next paragraph. After graduating from high school, Gates found work in a library and a grocery store. Her father then moved the family to Fresno, and in 1924, she enrolled in Fresno State Teachers College. That's where I went to college. Same place. Not the same building, though, because that building I went to was brand new. So let's highlight some things in here. After graduating from high school, we can highlight that. And then what did she do? Work in a library. Highlight work in a library. The grocery store part's not too important. The next line highlight moved and Fresno. And then highlight enrolled in Fresno State Teachers College. So she went to college to learn to be a teacher. That's going to affect what she does in the future. Remember, she hasn't written any books yet. How old is she in 1924? Well, she was born in 1901, or 1901, so she's 23 years old. That's about the age people go to college, nowadays anyway. Then in the next paragraph, two years later, Gates attended Los Angeles Library School. Ooh, okay, let's highlight that. We're looking more close, getting closer to books here. Los Angeles Library School. Then she returned to Fresno, to work at the children, as the children's librarian at the Fresno County Library in Central California from 1930 to 1940. So let's highlight children's librarian at the Fresno County Library, 1930 to 1940. We know where the Fresno County Library is because we know where Fresno is. This was taken from an article that people all over the country and all over the world might read on the internet. Interesting that she was from right here, where we live. So those are the things you're going to put in the second column. When you get the video finished, you're going to put that in the second column here under Biblical Influences. Those are things about her family and where she went to college and what she studied that got her on the track of being an author for children. But she didn't know that yet when she went to college when she was a librarian. Then she started thinking about books and writing books. Okay, so the next column. Qualities of character. So under this, we're gonna write, what kind of person was she? Was she helpful, caring, 
hardworking, creative, obviously. That, <clears throat> you can't write a book and not be creative. So you're going, we're going to read this section, and then you're going to write some things about her character qualities. But we're not going to write these things yet. These are just ideas that I was showing you to show you what you mean by character qualities. But do you see this over here? Let me get my pen. It says, why? Why do you say that about her? Why do you think she was diligent or caring or whatever you say about her? Don't just say, oh, she was creative. I want to know what you see in her life that tells you she's creative or tell you, tells you she's helpful, whatever. So let's read this Christian character, excuse me, qualities of character section on the paper, right down here, the bottom of this first page. While in Fresno, Gates had a radio program telling stories to children. This was before television was invented. So if you wanted to listen to a fun story, you didn't watch a cartoon, you listened to the radio. So what does that tell us about her? She cared about children. So write that right there on your notes. Cared about children. I think you know how to spell that. Cared about children. Next section. She also visited the schools built for the children of workers displaced by the Dust Bowl, telling stories and sharing books. So you don't know, again, much about the Dust Bowl yet, but it was a time when a lot of people lost their jobs, lost their farms, had to leave home. They just left it all behind and moved to be able to find work. We're going to learn about that. So she cared about those in need. So write that as a little note right there next to sharing books. Cared about those in need. Let's go on. And anytime I'm going too fast for you, pause the video, write it down, and then turn the video back on. In 1940, she wrote Blue Willow, a book about the daughter of a migrant farmer like those she worked with when she went to work at the school. Following Blue Willow, she wrote many other novels for children. So you can highlight wrote Blue Willow and, many, and then highlight many other novels for children. So writing books for people is a thing you do, that you can do to serve people. So she was a servant. She cared about people. You can put whatever you, whatever you see in that as her character quality. Next section. Later in her life, she taught children's literature and storytelling at several universities. She also wrote books retelling the Greek myths and edited reading textbooks for children. We don't use a reading textbook here, but in the public schools a lot, they use books that teach about reading, how to read, and how to read literature. So she worked at producing those textbooks. So she was creative and helpful. You can write that down. And then the very last thing says, the children's room at the Central Fresno Library has been named the Doris Gates Room in her honor. So she did a lot for people or for her community of Fresno. So she was a servant. She did a lot for her community. Write something like that there as a note. So you're going to write some of these things she did and then what it tells you about her character. So you could write down, she had a radio program telling stories to children because she cared about children. Gives her, that's her character, caring. All right, going on to the next section, biblical contribution. Next page, where is my page? So you can see where I am. We're on the second page at the top. So let's look at what biblical contribution means. 
What did she write? How did her writing influence literature and the world? So we're going to see some interesting things about her book that she wrote. It was a different kind of book than most people were writing in those days. I'm going to pause the video to get you some pictures. All right, let's begin reading now under Biblical Contribution. Doris Gates was one of America's first writers of realistic children's fiction. So let's highlight one of America's first writers of realistic children's fiction. So I'm going to show you what that means. Sorry, phone call right in the middle of the video. Not good. All right, so here's some pictures of the front cover of books that were written for children in the days when Miss Gates was around. This is called The Animal's Picnic. Silliness, elephants dressed up in suits and dresses going on a picnic. Or here's an ABC book, A is for apple pie. Or pastime ABCs with cute little silly little rhymes about the alphabet in them. Or the land of the lost toys. Look at that little girl, she's asleep and there's toys. So it's a made up fanciful story. Well, I think I have one more. Yeah, this is called, I think it's called the Christmas Fairy or something. So most books written for children in the days when Miss Gates was growing up were fairy tales or ABC books or silly stories. So let's read this next paragraph. Blue Willow was a groundbreaking children's novel. That means it did something brand new and everybody went, <gasps> many, this is a quote from someone, I'm sorry, it didn't, it didn't tell me who, but many consider Blue Willow to be the first realistic problem novel for children. What does that mean? A story where the main character has a problem that needs to be solved. We're used to books like that all the time now, but in her days, but back in her days, she, no one had written books like this yet. Let's keep reading. And it was recognized for both its lasting literary merit, that means a good quality book, and for its expansion or making bigger of the range of subjects which could be explored in books for children. So that means that nobody thought children would read books where there was a, a main character who had a problem that they needed to solve. We read books like that all the time. They make books like that for adults. But in the days when Miss Gates was writing, you saw the kind of books they wrote for kids. I think they thought kids didn't have any brains or something. I don't know. So in this paragraph, let's highlight Blue Willow and first realistic problem novel for children. The next paragraph says, children's literature expert Anita Sylvie says it's realistic, I mean the Blue Willows, realistic handling of modern social issues is a significant contribution to children's literature. So just, they're just saying that because she wrote a book about a real life story of a real life problem of a, of a fictional girl, this was an important step forward for children's literature. So I don't think we'll highlight anything there. That just reinforces what the, first, the second paragraph said. Next paragraph. Christine Jenkins writes in Literary Trends, that's a, a magazine about books, that librarians for children usually appreciated its, meaning Blue Willow's, quote, combination of literary quality, child appeal, and positive value. So it was a well-written book, kids liked it, and it had good values. Some hard things happen in the book, but there's good values of love of family, love of God's word, things like that in the book, which we're going to see. So let's write, let's highlight literary quality, child appeal, and positive values. 
in the next section, it says the working class setting and portrayal of a migrant families' conditions were first for children's literature. So working class means people who are just hardworking farm workers. They're not rich people or kings and queens. These stories were always written about princesses and dragons and all that kind of stuff. So this is real life working class family, migrant family. That means people who move with the crops to, to, the, to the state. They move every couple of months or every couple of weeks. When the cantaloupes aren't, are all done here, they move north where the cantaloupes are ripening and then they move north again. This still happens today. So our main character, that's what their family is doing. So let's highlight, uh, you know, I don't think we'll highlight anything in that one. That again just shows that it's a dealing with a real life situation and not dragons and princesses. The next thing, the fact that Gates, the author, made Janie, that's our best, our main character in our book, made Janie's best friend at Mexican American was also groundbreaking. So this book was written in a time in our country when there was still a lot more racism than there is now. And white people were friends with white people, and Mexican people were friends with Mexican people, and they didn't mix. But in our book, the author chose to, because she made up the story, she made up the characters, and she chose to make Janie's best friend be a, a Mexican-American girl named Lupe. So we're going to see that in the book, too. So highlight that. Bates made Janie's best friend a Mexican-American. was also groundbreaking. Groundbreaking means brand new thing. And the thing that people would do more after she did it, but she was the first one to do it. And then the last paragraph. When Blue Willow was published, there was an ongoing debate, that means kind of a discussion, kind of an argument, among teachers and librarians about whether children's literature should be imaginative or realistic. Should it be castles and fairies and Princesses and dragons, that's imaginative, that's what they thought. Or realistic, like real life. And it says Blue Willow was both. And you're going to see that in the story. So, at the very bottom it says Blue Willow is a Newbery Honor book. That means it got an award for being a really, really good book. So highlight that. And then I just gave you a list at the bottom of other books by Doris Gates. So you can see she wrote a lot of them. They're all for kids. I've read some of them. I've read North Fork and River Ranch and Little Vic, The Cat and Mrs. Carey. I don't remember any of them, but when my son was your age, we read a lot of those books. And I didn't even realize who they were by or that she was from Fresno. Oh, well, I wasn't paying attention. So now you're going to go back when this video is over and you're going to take the things you've highlighted and you're going to put them on your chart. Write small so that it fits. If you run out of room, you can get out another piece of paper and draw some lines and make another set of columns. But I don't think you'll run out of room. So just remember what you're talking about in each column and what you're trying to tell yourself and me about Mrs. Gates. Miss Gates. All right, call me if you have any questions.